Hi guys and welcome to this week's video. In this video we're going to be looking at a few different ways of auto starting an encrypted Unraid array. So let's get started. So, you've encrypted your array, which is great, but now your array will not auto start because you have to enter the encryption key. So setting the array to auto start doesn't work. So what can we do? Well, we can start it up manually, but who wants to do that when we can have it done automatically? But we just have to make sure that it's secure. Well, at least as secure as we can, and I would say this method is semi-secure. So, I got this idea from a post that Bonnie NL made on the Unraid forums, and he suggests storing the key file on a share on another computer on the network, and then have Unraid mount this share and copy the file over. Now, I thought this was a great idea, but the only problem for me is I don't really have any other computers that are on all the time on the network, and most of my other machines are VMs, so I couldn't really do this. So I started storing the key file on the Unraid flash drive and having Unraid load it at boot. But doing this, I may as well have not had encryption on the server at all. If someone took my server, that way they could start it and access all my files. So obviously I needed something else. So I thought why not store the key file online on an FTP server and then when the server boots, have it connect by FTPS and bring the key file across to the Unraid server. So then the key file is under my control. It's secure under a password protected FTP account and securely transferred over the internet to the server. And if for any reason my server ever does get taken, I can just delete the key file on the FTP server and then my array won't start. So for me, that's perfect. Now I've tried two different ways of storing the key file in an FTP server. One was on some web hosting that I already had. Now, if you don't have any web hosting, then it's really easy to find a cheap deal nowadays, but you will need to have a domain name. And the other way, I thought, well, why can't we just use a smartphone? You can actually run an FTP server on a smartphone using an app. Now, this will have an advantage or a disadvantage, depending on how you see it, and that is the fact that the smartphone must be connected to the network at the same time. So basically, if you're home, then the server will auto start decrypted, and if not, it won't. So let's set this up both ways. First, we're gonna to need to get hold of the key file, and then we're gonna upload it to our FTP server. So the first thing we need to do is just to power up the Unraid server, and then put in our passphrase and then click start. And so now with the array decrypted, let's click onto terminal and we'll copy the key file temporarily onto the Unraid flash drive. And to do that, we'll use the command cp space forward slash root forward slash key file space forward slash boot forward slash key file. And now that's copied that to the Unraid flash drive. So now we want to copy it from the Unraid flash drive onto our computer where we have an FTP client. So let's open our file browser. And now this is my server here. And here's the share for my flash drive. So I'm gonna open up that. And here's the file that we just copied over. So now I'm going to bring that onto my desktop. And now I'm going to delete the file off the flash drive. And so here's our key file that we'll be uploading to the FTP server. And so to do that, we're gonna be needing an FTP server. And for this first part of the video, we're gonna upload it to a web-based FTP server. And then after that, we'll come back and upload it to an FTP server on our cell phone. So like I said earlier, if you have a domain name already and you have some hosting, then you've probably got access to an FTP server. But if you haven't, then you're going to need to buy a domain name and some hosting. And the guys I use, they're called Smart Hosting. I've been using them for about a year and they seem okay. They charge £33 for a year's hosting and they give you a free domain name for that year. And if you want to sign up to the same company that I'm using in this video, then I'd really appreciate you signing up through my affiliate link in the description. And so here I am on my web hosting web UI. And you'll find a lot of web hosting companies use the same interface, so yours may be the same. 
There's various things that can be set up here, but what we need to do is to create an FTP account. And here we just have to choose a username and password. And I'm going to use the username Unraid and pop in a password here. So I just want to click on to create FTP account and the FTP account's created. Now if I scroll down here, you can see the account that I just created here. So then if I click on configure FTP client, it will give me the FTP settings here. And also I could download configuration files for these various FTP clients. And so the next thing to do is to go back across to our computer and then upload our key file to this FTP account that we've just created. And the FTP client I'm going to be using here is FileZilla. So I'm going to do a quick connect. So I'm just going to put in the host here, which is ftp.gridrunner.co.uk and my username, which was unraid at gridrunner.co.uk and my password here and the port number. And then just click on quick connect. And so now all I need to do is just drag the key file it's on my desktop, a cross over here, and now it's uploaded to the FTP server. So now that's that part done, and now we need to get Unraid when it boots up to actually download this file and to put it in the correct place. And for that, we're going to have to edit the Go file on the Unraid flash drive. So I'm going to go back to my file browser, and then back to my server, and here's the flash drive. And now go into the folder called config here, and here's the Go file. So I'm going to edit this with the text editor. Now, if you're using Windows, please don't use Notepad because it will probably go wrong. You need to use something like Notepad++. And I'm on a Mac at the moment and I'm actually going to use TextMate. And another good text editor is Atom. So I suggest you use one of these three. Okay, so here's my Go file. I've actually got two lines in here. Now, because I'm using a Ryzen CPU, I've got this top line here. So if you're using an Intel CPU, then you're probably not going to have this line here at all. And what we're going to be using in the Go file is the excellent command line tool wget to bring down the file from the FTP server. Okay, so I'm just going to paste the line in here. And so that's wget space dash dash FTPS dash implicit. And this sets wget just to use FTPS. Then next, space dash dash user equals unraid at gridrunner.co.uk. And that's my FTP username. And next, space dash dash password equals unraid1234. And that's the FTP password. OK, and next, space FTP colon forward slash forward slash gridrunner.co.uk forward slash key file. And so this is the FTP server address and then the key file, which is the file that we're downloading. And then lastly, space hyphen capital O space forward slash root forward slash key file. The forward slash capital O specifies where we're downloading the file to on the Unraid server. And that's going to be in forward slash root and then the name of the file is going to be key file. So the destination forward slash root, this is held in the RAM. This means that if the server reboots, the file is lost. So the key isn't permanently stored on the server. It's only there until the server is powered down or rebooted. OK, so that's all we need. So now we can save this file and then go across to the Unraid server. Let's go to settings and then disk settings and we want to make sure that Enable Auto Start is set to Yes. So now let's try restarting the server and let's see if it comes up without us having to put our encryption passphrase in. And if we look at the Unraid console whilst it loads up, we can see here that it's connecting to the server and downloading the key file. OK, so the server's booted back up and now the array should restart without any user intervention. OK, and so now all of the drives are unlocked and the array is auto started. OK, good, so that's working, that's all cool. That's how to download the key file from an online FTP server. So now let's look at how to use a cell phone to do exactly the same. Now, I've only tested this on an Android phone because I don't have an iOS phone, but I have seen that there are FTP server apps available for iOS, but whether they'll work or not, I really don't know. OK, so on the Play Store, do a search for FTP server. 
and then click on to see more. And I downloaded the Wi-Fi FTP server. I decided to download the paid version just because I didn't want any ads. So once you've downloaded the program, start it up and it will bring you to this screen here. So click on the cog to get to settings. And then the first thing we're going to see here is the port number. Now by default it's 2221, so we want to make a note of that. Now next we can enable anonymous access, but we don't want to do that. We need to set up a user ID, so I'm going to use the same as I did before. I'm going to use unraid at gridrunner.co.uk. Now this user ID can be anything you want. And next we're going to have to create a password, and again we're going to use the same as before. I'm going to use unraid1234. Now there's a setting here to enable FTPS. I tried it but it didn't work for me so I just left it off. Normal FTP is fine because we're not going to be going across the internet when we're using it from our cell phone. So next we can click onto root folder to choose the folder that's going to be shared by FTP. And click onto custom folder where you can make an empty folder to be able to store the key file. So once we've done this we can come out of the settings and then click start to start up the FTP server. And you can see here it gives us the details we need to log in. So let's go back across to FileZilla and then upload the key file to the cell phone. And so first let's put in the host IP address, which here it says it's 10.10.20.160. Now one thing to note, if you're going to use this, then you're going to have to set your router to give your cell phone the same IP address each time. Now this is really easy to do, and if you're not sure how to do it, then there's plenty of guides online that are really straightforward and make it easy. Now if you remember when we are in the settings, the port number was 2221. So we need to put that in here. Now all we need to do is just put in the user ID and password that we created. And click on the quick connect. And so now we're connected. So I'm going to drag across the key file and upload it. OK, so we can come out of FileZilla now. And now let's edit our Go file. So let's open our file browser, go to the flash drive, config, and then open the Go file. Again, make sure you use a good text editor. And now you can see the reason why I chose the same username and password as I used in the first part of the video. Just because I'm lazy and I didn't really want to have to type them again. So the things we're going to change here is we don't need to have FTPS hyphen implicit because that doesn't work. So we need to delete that out and we need to change the FTP address to the IP address. But now we need to specify a port number as it isn't a standard port for FTP. So we need to put colon and then 2221. And so now let's save this file. So now let's go back across to the Unraid server so we can test it and reboot and hopefully everything should come up and the array should be unlocked. Okay, so there we have it. Our Unraid array has been unlocked and auto started by our smartphone. So that's two ways to use wget and an FTP server to auto start an encrypted array. Oh, and by the way, if anyone tries the smartphone way with an iOS device, then please let us all know in the comments below if it worked out for you. Anyway guys, it's time for me to go now, and I really hope you found this video useful. And if you did, then please help me and hit that like button, and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. And if you really like what I'm doing, and you'd like to help support the channel, then any donations are really appreciated, which you can do through the PayPal or Patreon links in the description of this video or the channel homepage. Anyway guys, whatever you're up to for the rest of the day, I hope it's good, and I'll catch you all next time.